Hello friends, welcome to engineering tutorial. In uh, my video related to amplitude modulation, I discussed about the concept related to double sideband suppressed carrier signal, which consisted of two sidebands, the lower sideband and the upper sideband with the carrier signal suppressed or filtered out. So you can check out the video related to DSPSE signal in uh, my YouTube channel. It is posted under amplitude modulation basic concept and sidebands. So please check out that video before you go through this video so that you understand the concept of generation of DSPSE signal in a better way. So, today's topic is about the generation of a double sideband suppressed carrier DSBSC signal. We are using non-linear devices for the generation of such a signal. Now, using non-linear devices, there are two main methods which are used for generation of DSPSC signal. First, the balance modulator method. Second, the ring modulator method. We are going to discuss them separately. So, today's uh, video's topic is about balance modulator method for generation of DSPSC signal. So, let's get started. So the balance modulator method, it is the most important method of DSPSC signal generation. As I said, it consists of non-linear devices such as diodes, transistors, in this case we have used diodes, which are connected in balance mode. Balance mode means even number of non-linear devices will be used, okay. Balance mode means even number of non-linear devices will be used. See here, two diodes are used, even number. So this is the block diagram for the generation of a DSBSE signal. Here, one of the signal is the message signal, MT, or M as a function of T, and one of the signal is the carrier signal with unit amplitude. The amplitude of the carrier signal is 1 cos omega ct. We have three adders, okay. One adder here, which signals are fed, which are crisscross fashion, mt cos omega ct, and this adder also mt and cos omega ct. But here, the sign convention is different. Here it's plus plus, here it's plus and minus. So pay attention to this special note of the signs okay in which the signals are fed then the output of the two adders are fed to the diode which is the nonlinear device here it has a un, uh, the input output characteristics as y equals to ax plus bx square plus cx cube here x is the input to the nonlinear device or diode and y is the output. A, B and C are constants depending upon the type of nonlinear device which is used, whether it is a diode or a transistor. But we approximate it as Ax plus Bx square. We ignore the remaining terms. In this case, we have taken uh, it as Ax plus Bx square. Then the output of the two nonlinear diodes are fed to a final adder at the output with sign convention plus and minus and then the output of the final adder is fed to the band pass filter. Now the output of the band pass filter gives us the required double side band suppressed carrier signal. Now please pause this video and draw this block diagram if you can in your note copy so that you can understand 
the remaining steps in a better way. Please pause the video and uh, draw this uh, block diagram in a rough way just for uh, that you can understand the remaining steps. Okay. <coughs> Here, as I said, we have approximated the input output relationship of the diode as y equals to ax plus bx square remain uh, ignoring the uh, remainder higher order terms a and b are constants depending on the type of nonlinear device used whether it is a diode or a transistor as even number of nonlinear devices are used it is it operates in balance mode as i said before okay even number of Non-linear devices or even number of diodes are used in this case, so this balance is it would have been odd, it would have been unbalanced. So please uh, refer to the block diagram you have drawn. So the mathematical analysis of the block diagram. The output of the first adder to which the message signal and the carrier signal of in unit amplitude is fed is cos omega C T plus M T. The output of the second adder is cos omega ct minus mt. Note down the change in sign because uh, in one of the adders it was plus plus and the other adder, the second adder, it was plus minus. So that's why there is a sign change. The output of the two adders are fed to the two nonlinear devices which are used, that is diodes, which had their input output characteristics as y equals to ax plus bx square where x is the input, y is the output. So, the output of the first nonlinear device is given by y1 as a function of t is equal to ax1t plus bx1t whole square following this relationship. The output of the second nonlinear device is given by y2t is equal to ax2t plus bx2t whole square. Please refer to the block diagram which you have drawn in a rough way. Okay. So that you can understand it, so that you can follow it. Next, the output of the final adder to which the output of the two nonlinear devices were fed is given by yt is equal to y1t minus y2t minus sign because it was in plus minus sign convention. Now, <clears throat> so when you put the respective values in the final output yt, we get is this y1t minus y2t we substitute these values here we get ax1t plus bx1t whole square minus ax2t plus bx2t whole square now x1t the output of the first adder was cos omega ct plus mt so we substitute that value here so it gives us a long expression which we have to solve okay Please note down these things in your note, uh, note copy so you can understand it in a better way and follow it up later. So in order to solve it quickly, what we do is that we take or substitute cos omega ct with x let's say and the message signal mt with y. So yt becomes ax plus y plus bx x plus y whole square minus a into x minus y plus b into x minus y whole square. So if we simplify the expression, we get a into x plus y minus ax minus y. Here the ax minus y from this part goes here. a is common, so we get ax plus y minus ax minus y. The x plus y whole square term which is attached to b goes uh, uh, the b x minus y whole square here minus which is attached to b and this b into x plus y whole square we take b common and we get this value this part this whole term okay note down these things x minus y x plus y a common we get this part x plus y whole square minus b into x minus y whole square we take b common and we get x plus y whole square minus x minus y whole square so we when we expand these things using algebraic identities, we get the final output as 2ay plus 4bxy. Now, y is equal to the message signal mt, which is equal to em cos omega mt, 
and x is equal to cos omega c2 the carrier signal of unit amplitude so you substitute these values here we get the final output as 2a em cos omega mt plus 4b em cos omega mt cos omega c2 so now here we have put this trigonometric identity 2 cos a into cos b here 2 cos a 2 cos terms we get cos a minus b plus cos a plus b so when we put this identity here in this part 2 into cos omega mt cos omega ct b and em are constant so they go outside b and em are constant so they go outside along with 2 this 2 along with cos omega mt cos omega ct we put this trigonometric identity so we get this signal finally we get yt is equal to 2a em cos omega mt plus 2b em cos omega c minus omega mt plus cos omega c plus omega mt using this identity trigonometric identity now the band pass filter which is used is designed in such a way that the cutoff frequencies the lower and upper cutoff frequencies of the pass band is set as this omega c minus omega m to omega c plus omega m the lower cutoff frequency and the upper cutoff frequency so when this signal this signal is passed through the band pass filter having this pass band range this part gets suppressed having frequency omega m which is below this so this part gets suppressed so we are only left with this part which is the required dsp-ac signal so if uh, if you have uh, uh, if you have understanding about amplitude modulation uh, and dsp-ac signal you will know that this is the lower sideband and this is the upper sideband and this is the double sideband suppressed carrier signal which is the output of the band pass filter okay so the final output which we get is given by y f our final output p is equal to 2b em cos omega c minus omega mt plus cos omega c plus omega mt which is the required dsp-ac signal it is the lower sideband having frequency omega c minus m component and here the frequency component of the upper sideband is omega c plus omega m it is the lower sideband it is the upper sideband and this is the required double sideband suppressed carrier signal with the carrier signal suppressed there is no carrier signal okay so here i have uh, discussed with you one of the important methods of generation of double sideband suppressed carrier signal by using balanced modulator method in my upcoming video i will be discussing about the ring modulator method for generation of dsbsc signal so i hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel engineering tutorium for more such videos related to electrical electronics communication and instrumentation engineering have a great day thank you very much